Good Friday morning for South County. It's Beverly Adams, your A&R program assistant with the UGA Extension Office of Forsyth County. This week is our pest of the week and we are doing the Eastern Cottontail. I know some of you are probably thinking, well, that's not a pest, it's a cute little bunny. But if they were eating your vegetables or your flowers in your garden, you would think otherwise. So the way that you identify an Eastern Cottontail is that it's polite as grizzled black with an orange nape. Its ears are edged with white and tipped black. The eye rings are a cream color. The tail can be described as gray, brown above with a narrow white edge and a cottony white underneath. And that's what gives the cottontail its common name. The legs are a deep orange and the feet are large with a whitish, whitish orange color. Adult rabbits typically weigh about two to four pounds and they're about 16 to 17 inches long from nose to rump. Cottontails are a generalist habitat species but prefer early succession habitats. These plant communities are typically dominated by a variety of grasses, herbaceous plants, shrubs, briar thickets, and small trees. Fields and pastures are also used as a preferred habitat. The mating system for the eastern cottontail is polygonous. A male will mate with multiple females and no pair bond is formed. The females produce several litters of two to six young each breeding season. Breeding typically occurs between March and August and the gestation period is 26 to 28 days. Females may begin breeding again before their young reach one day old. The female rabbit creates a nest cavity in tall grass or weeds. Newborn rabbits are born in an undeveloped state and they require care and feeding by the female. The newborns usually weigh around one ounce. The female nurses young um, once or twice a day and the young open their eyes around two weeks of age and they leave the nest soon after. Feeding, um, usually the eastern cottontails feed on grasses and legumes such as clover and less less pedzas during the warmer months. They also consume large amounts of forbs such as ragweed and crops such as soybeans when available. During the winter they shift to a diet of more twigs and bark of young trees. When plants are not available in the late winter they opportunistically eat things such as snails and carrion. In milder climates like Georgia some green vegetation is usually available year-round so food habits will change little across the seasons. They are solitary except the females caring for the young. Their home range sizes of female rabbits range from one to 15 acres and male use up to 100 acres. They use dense um, woody cover and burrow holes um, from, from other animals for escaping predators. They rely on above ground nests, stump holes or burrows created by other animals such as groundhogs. They can run up to 18 miles per hour when evading predators. They are primarily nocturnal and they usually rest throughout the day. So now we're going to look at some of the damage issues on plants and trees and shrubs. They'll feed on plants and lawns and damage ornamental plantings. They will consume garden plants, crops, flowers, and woody plants. Rabbits will mostly consume small twigs and other green plants left in the winter months. During late winter in the south, rabbits have been known to strip bark from young trees. If you look at the photo to the left, that is an example of a tree that has been stripped of its bark by a rabbit. When feeding on young trees, they will girdle the bark and cambium layer around the tree as high as they can reach. This is mostly done more in the later winter months of northern states when green vegetation isn't available. And this can kill the trees if the damage is extensive enough. The two green plants are hostas, I believe, and this is rabbit damage done to those. Um, a rabbit has feasted on them and you'll notice that their bites are clean. Um, there's no jagged edges or anything like that. It's a clean bite and that's when you pretty much know you have a rabbit. So now we're going to go on uh, over some control measures that can help you deter the rabbits and help get rid of their um, population. The first control is habitat modification, remove brush piles, um, keeping yards maintained by cutting grass and disposing of leaves, 
um, destroying any burrows on the property. Um, also, unmowed un ditches, banks, and fence rows, they're ideal habitat, so make sure you're mowing all that. Um, exclusion, this is one of the most effective ways to protect gardens and trees, and that is to install fencing. Um, a two foot tall chicken wire fence with a tight bottom buried just a few inches deep will be effective. And to keep out the younger rabbits, wire mesh one inch or smaller um, helps with that. For orchards, they can install a fourth inch wire hardware cloth around young trees to prevent girdling. Make sure you put the mesh far enough away from the tree that the rabbits can't chew through the holes to the tree. Fencing may um, be the most cost effective damage control method. However, it may not be appropriate for foundation plantings or large acreage. Another um, area of control is repellents. Lots of companies offer chemical repellents to prevent rabbit browsing. Um, they have great variability when used for cottonelle rabbits, but none, no repellents are 100% effective. Um, it's important to um, follow the instructions provided to apply them legally because the label is the law. Most can be applied to landscape or, found, or foundation plants. Some are labeled for use on vegetables, but with restrictions. Read and follow all label instructions always. Um, and most are exempt for pesticide regulations. The most common repellents are odor or taste repellents. New growth and heavy rains, though, can decrease their effectiveness um, and they must be reapplied frequently. Hinder is an outdoor repellent that would deter um, rabbits for con from consuming desirable plants. The active ingredient is ammonium soap of higher fatty acids. Also, hot sauce is a common ingredient in deer and repellents deer and rabbit repellents um, that can be applied to garden plants as a taste repellent. Plant skid is one of the most effective repellents used to deter rabbits. This is an animal blood based product that is taste and scent that is a taste and scent repellent. Other repellents that help deter rabbits include Bob XR, Bonide Repels, All, Robert Star Robert St Rabbit Stopper, and Bob X Deer Repellent. Canada. Um, the effectiveness of these repellents is variable and it depends, depends on the other food sources available. The, of the repellents tested, plant skid, which is the blood meal product, provided the greatest control from rabbit herbivory. The last uh, measure of control and probably my least favorite is lethal control. Rabbits, they reproduce quickly, which that may require lethal control for effective long-term long results. It's only effective for a limited amount of time unless applied consistently over time. Lethal methods such as trapping or shooting are only effective with other control methods such as exclusion in place. There are no toxicants um, that, can, that are legal to use for poisoning rabbits. Shooting is an acceptable method of control in rural areas but make sure local law allows it. Since rabbits are a game species, they are managed by the Georgia Department of Natural Resources and property owners must comply with local hunting laws as well as city or county firearm ordinances. Removing rabbits from the population does not guarantee population reduction the following year. So there is my pest of the week, the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. I am Beverly Adams, the UGA Extension for Scythe County A&R Program Assistant. Um, we are located at 5110 Piney Grove Road in Cumming, Georgia. Here is our phone number. If you have any questions regarding plants, animals, 4-H, um, anything of that nature, please give us a call there or you can email us. There's our email address. Also, we have a Facebook page that you can message us through Facebook or on the website. We have a new virtual help desk form that you can fill out with any questions and upload pictures and you can get help from a master gardener or a master naturalist. I hope you all have a great weekend and thank you for joining me.